The Ryan Tuberty Show on RTE Radio 1 with Vodafone TV and broadband. The channels you love, together with unlimited super fast fibre broadband. Now I'm joined uh, this morning by a man who is a true legend, a legend of football. Uh, announcing his retirement from international football last week, Shea Given had this to say. It's every boy's dream to play football for his school, his local club, and maybe in his wildest dreams, his country. To try and be as good at football as his father was before him and make his mother proud. Well, there's no doubt about it that Shea Given has made his mother proud and done his club and country proud. He's the first Irishman to play for his country for 20 years or more. Only Robbie Keane has won more caps for the boys in green. And I'm delighted to say that Shea Given joins us this morning. Good morning, Shea. Good morning, Marty. Good morning. Thank you so much indeed uh, for joining us uh, here on the Ryan Tuberty uh, Show. Uh, we're, we're privileged and honoured to have you on the programme. Talk to me about the decision to retire, first of all. Uh, how yeah. difficult was that, that final conclusion? Uh, yeah, difficult, I suppose, because as you said there in your piece, it was, you know, 20 years, a long time to be involved with the, with the whole setup. You know, I made my debut at 19, and um, it was a big decision, but I felt the time was right. You know, obviously, Darren Randolph played in the summer in, in, in France, had a great tournament as well, and, you know, the future's in safe hands, and I just felt now was the time to step away, and, you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed my time. You know, as I say, I never thought I'd play one game for Ireland, so to play 134 games was 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 beyond my wildest dreams, you know, growing up in, in Lifford and Donegal. I would never have thought that, you know, I could play so many times for, for our country, which is something I'm extremely proud about. Let me go back, if I can start at the beginning. Uh, let me go to a young boy, 12, 13, 14, growing up in Lifford, uh, Shay. Yeah. Was it always your ambition uh, to play uh, professional football? Uh, I suppose it was, but, uh, you know, I think people who maybe who live up there, people who maybe even visited Donegal, you know, it's, it's sort of, I live a mile outside Lifford in the countryside, and, and, and you know, we played in the front garden with my brothers and stuff, and... and Played for Lifford Celtic and, and obviously my school's in Columbus College as well. But here's your dream. You say, what do you want to do when you get older? You want to play football, you know. But in the back of your mind, you, you kind of felt, you know, there, there's probably very little chance of that happening because it's first, someone's got to find you, you know, and then second, you've got to be talented enough and, and third, you've got to be good enough. And yes, it was a dream, but I suppose everyone has dreams and, and maybe don't always, you know, come true or whatever. What was it like being a 15, 16 year old, I think, when you, when you signed first? What was that yeah. moment like? And how did it happen for yeah. you? It was a big moment, yeah. I mean, we, we had a great run in the FEI Junior Cup, actually, Lifford Celtic, and we got to the semi final, which, which was a big achievement for such a small club. And uh, I think scouts started to take note, you know, of my, my ability. And I was 15 at the time, and, and you know, I was playing my men's team. And to be fair to all the lads in Lifford, they looked after me well. and you know, a few scouts started started looking at me and I, I went across the water to, to different clubs and, you know, Bradford City was the first. I went to Manchester United and, and obviously I ended up signing for Glasgow Celtic. So it was a big, you know, decision even that because I had a choice between Man United and Glasgow Celtic and my dad was a, had a huge influence at, at that time. And, you know, Liam Brady being the manager at Glasgow Celtic, he felt that I, I had a better opportunity to play there. So packed the bags and off we went to Glasgow. Your dad uh, was a huge influence uh, on your mm. career, wasn't he? I mean, he played. Yeah. He was a good footballer himself. He played in the Ulster Senior League, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he was a good goalkeeper, and and um, we used to go as a family actually every Sunday and watch him play. And you know, even he played. Uh, I'm forty now, but I think he played into his forties as well. He's a he's a fit man as well, and uh, I suppose that's where the goalkeeping side side of things came from. I, I enjoyed playing out the field as well. Fourteen, maybe fifteen year olds as well. I enjoyed playing centre forward. Actually, would you believe in? But my Shea dad given a centre forward. I uh, was top goal scorer from my school one year, so I was, I was very <laughs> proud of that stuff. But uh, you know, my dad must have seen more skills than my goalkeeping than, than my outfield. But you know, was, you know, he he influenced me, me a lot in that front because you know he felt that you know goalkeeping was a specialised position, and he and he felt that I was talented. And and if I had a chance of making it, you know, across the water, then I think I needed to focus on my goalkeeping, and, and that's what I did. Mm. So when you went to Glasgow, what was that like as a as a young teenager? I mean, you're yeah. on your own. I know there was a lot of yeah. Donegal people in Glasgow, but here you were embarking on a on a, an amazing journey that you didn't know whether you'd you'd make it or not. No, no, I was very homesick. If I'm being honest, Marty, the first year was mm. was extremely tough. Um, I stayed in one set of dug digs for about a month, and I, <laughs> as a 16 year old, I, I actually went and knocked on the manager's door. They were and I said, you know, I wasn't happy because. You know the diggers and the food and everything just wasn't wasn't right, and I just didn't feel settled at all. And and thankfully he moved me out to another house in, in Bishop Briggs outside of Glasgow with a with a lad from Derry, Nigel Melly, and we, you know, we sort of headed off together. And and 
it felt more at home. Albeit it was still very tough the first year because you're you know you're training twice a day and you're you're missing your family and your friends and you're wondering is this all going to be worth it because you know they say it's a big sacrifice and you know your heart says you want to be back in Donegal but your mind's telling you know there could be a there could be a career in it for you so you had to keep your head down and work hard and I'd say after the first year then you know it was better the second year and every year went past then yes it's still great when I get home but you know obviously the homesickness sort of is not as bad as the very first year it was very tough. So what was it like Shay that very first club match uh, that you played in front of thousands of people and here was a young fella from Lifford in County Donegal. As you say playing in front of thousands of people and and then you know, knowing it's this huge thing to stake people's jobs at stake, people's livelihoods and stuff and uh but I was just from Lifford, I was just wanted to play football, you know, I wanted to enjoy my football, I wanted to to show to everyone that I was a good enough goalkeeper to be to be playing in in, in their team and and I done that. I went on to Sunderland after that and then moved to, to Newcastle and stuff and you know, you could probably Google the rest I suppose but Mm. You know, just the buzz to play in front of thousands of people and millions watching on TV every week was, was, was extra special. Now, you've played under a lot of managers and coaching teams. Which of these do you most admire? Probably Kenny Douglas had a big influence in my career. You know, Kenny brought me to Blackburn when I was 18 and, and then he brought me to Newcastle when I was 21 and then put me straight in the first team. You know, as a 21-year-old goalkeeper, a permanent goalkeeper in the Premier League was showed the, the faith he had in me at that time whereas, whereas all our managers might have you know, held me back for a few more years he, he felt I was ready and so I've got huge respect for Kenny Douglas and, and still a friend, a friend of mine now and uh, I suppose looking back at all the managers you know, they've all in their own right have got their uh, you know, fantastic managers in their own right but I suppose Mick McCarthy would probably deserve a special mention for, from me personally because you know, at 19 years of age I think there was a couple of injuries to Packy Bonner and, and Alan Kelly at the time and, and there was all our older goalkeepers playing in, in the division, and, and I was on loan at Sunderland as a 19-year-old. So he could have he could have went for someone else, you know. Mm. And uh, but no, it was his first game in charge as manager as well, and, he, and I got the phone call, and you know he played me in the game, and um, as I say, this was the rest is history. But you know he he deserves great credit for giving me that opportunity. Can you describe what that phone call is like? Because the rest of us plebs like myself, we can only dream about doing what well, you that, did. You know the call came in, and it was just. Just really un- 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 unbelievable, really, uh, because I was at the age where I was still, you know, a couple of years left in the under twenty one team and, and what have you, and so they get picked for the for the senior team, and then to go up to Dublin and train with the, you know, players that your heroes growing up as a kid, and you know, you watch them in the World Cups and stuff, and you know, getting changed next to people like Roy Keane and Paul McGrath was was an unreal experience, you know, a real dream come true, uh, you know, if, uh, to do that and train with these guys, and you know, I got their autographs as a kid growing up, and now I'm. Sitting next to him, getting changed for for international, which which is unreal. And when you got that call uh, and you hung up the phone, uh, was it your dad that you rang first? I can't remember. Probably, but, but there's there's every chance it would be family. Definitely, you know, they, they, you would have told him first. And you know, my dad wouldn't have said probably how proud he is, but I'm sure you know he would have been extremely proud. And uh, the whole plant was up in a busload from Lifford and fr- friends and family, and even cousins from around the country. There was there was maybe 40 or 50 people come to my debut and stuff and I remember we had a big picture outside Lansdowne Road and stuff and uh, You haven't lost your Donegal accent Shay? No I'm very proud of where I'm from and uh, you know I wouldn't want to change anything Let me just dwell for the moment on, on a remarkable international career playing 134 times for Ireland for you what was the, the, the high point if I can start there Yeah uh, probably the highest point obviously was, was, was making my debut just getting that first game and then Going on from there, but the, the, probably the biggest high was would have been the World Cup, you know, in in, in Japan and Korea because it's, the World Cup's obviously the biggest and best tournament in, in football that we can we can actually play in, you know. So to be part of that was was unbelievable. You were up close and personal, obviously, with the whole episode in Saipan, yeah, with with Roy Keane and Mick McCarthy. Yeah, where, where did you stand in that, and what were your thoughts? I just thought it was a shame, you know. I, I don't think there's any winners at all. I think we just. We all just were wanting to get ready for a World Cup, and you know, you know, Roy Keane's our captain, and 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 we've lost our captain, you know. So, but uh, Mick McCarthy's a manager as well, and he, you know, we, it's, it's a hard one because I don't think anyone came out, you know, really that well out of it in, in a sense. But as a team, we had to, you know, forget what went went on off the pitch and and, and stick together and, and and get on with the football and and. You know, nothing was going to take away from me playing the World Cup. You know, I just wanted to get on the pitch and 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 show the people around the world that you know that that this lad from Donegal can can keep goals. 
Well, uh, time passes by and obviously yeah. you were part of the uh, Irish squad uh, for so many seasons with Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane. W- yeah. Were you close to Roy? Have you ever been close to Roy Keane? Uh, I, I don't know. I think as close as suppose as, as, as you can be. You know, Roy's a, an interesting character. I mean, he's, he, Roy was the reason I got back involved. I retired, obviously, after the Euros in, in 2012 and Roy was an assistant manager, obviously, at Aston Villa and he, he, he could see obviously every day me in training and stuff and felt that I could still have something to offer, you know, so he had a big influence on me coming back with the Irish setup, and, uh, you know, I'm thankful for that as well and and, and obviously getting into Martin O'Neill's ear and, and, and bringing me back, I suppose, so, but no, I spoke to him last week over over text and stuff when I, when I announced my retirement and he, he sent me back a really, you know, a really, I don't know what to say, a message, you know, it was a touching message what he sent back to me and, and very kind words he said to me, you know, so, you know, people all, always talk about the, you know, he's, I don't know, he's, his attitude or whatever, or sometimes he's, he's unapproachable and stuff, but I think inside the camp with the lads over the last few years, he's been brilliant, you know, and, and the players have huge respect for him, you know, and, and, and me included. And there, apart from the highlights, uh, there have been some some low points as well, because we were all heartbroken, but I'm sure because you were right there with the Thierry Henry handball. Was that the lowest moment for you, Shane? Uh-huh. I suppose it'll, it'll, you know, people talk about it in 20 years, you know, and 30 years maybe, I suppose, but it's, 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 um, yeah, it, it was a low moment because that night, especially in that particular game, we, we actually played extremely well, and, and sometimes that gets unnoticed as well. We, we, we were the better team on the night, and, and, you know, it was just, it's just a shame how, you know, it all panned out in the end because we did feel we were cheated in the end, and, and not just by Henri itself, you know, the officials we felt should have spotted because, it wasn't only one handball; it was two handballs in the, in the in the space of whatever a second or something. But it was such a big, big decision. You know, I just I was shocked as the goalkeeper because I was probably the closest to it that mm. you know no one could see it because he he was nearly he nearly caught the ball. You know, so it was like obviously I was just going to take a free kick for 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 a handball, and I looked at the referee and he's pointing to the penalty spot, and I was just like I couldn't believe it. And I looked at the linesman; he was running up as well to the halfway line. I thought, oh, there's something not right here. So you can probably remember the pictures of me chasing after the referee. I remember and it well. But France of this free kick. Flora Maluda trying to measure it. Richard Dunn lost down. Oh, Henri! Oh, it's in the net! It's a goal! The, the Irish players are appealing for a handball here. Now, is it control with the hand? I, I think Paul McShane should have dealt with it, George. I think if he had a bit more conviction about it, he could have actually got it out for a corner. But is there a handball before this ball is played back? A total confusion in the Irish defence. The protest won't count. The referee's made his decision. But there's the handball by Henri. And by the way, not just once, George, but twice. It's actually hit him on the arm, and then he's controlled it with his hand. Just watch it from this angle. Yes. And then he's knocked it back to Gallus, and it's easy, but... Oh, That's a handball, no question about it. Yeah, but I mean, it was just... It was unbelievable that that, 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 that decision and that, that goal cost us, obviously, maybe a place in, at the World Cup. Have you spoken to Thierry Henry about it since? I've met him a couple of times, but we never actually spoke about that that incident. You know, I don't think he's he's um, you know he probably look back and not regret it because I suppose it's the referee's decision, not Thierry Henry's decision. You know, but I don't think he he, he would be proud of that. I suppose what what happened, and and I don't think it's his fault in a, in a sense that way. But you know, that I, I feel the officials maybe should have spotted it. Well, definitely should have spotted it. Hmm. In in terms of. Uh all the saves you've made because you've made countless nail-biting breathtaking decisive saves uh, like this one we're going to play in the qualifying campaign for the World Cup 2006 the free taker is the mighty Zinedine Zidane of the French side that reached the final of that tournament Keane Roy Keane Kilban Duff Clinton Morrison would be missing the Cyprus trip if they were to get a yellow tonight Zidane well, scarcely necessary to pull one of the great artists of World football, it's Zidane, and a wonderful save by Shea Given. It's just absolutely world class. He's read it brilliantly, it's executed perfectly. And if he doesn't get a strong hand on that, it's going to go into the net, it's going to squeeze into the corner. He knew that he had to be strong, strong when he got there. Fantastic stop. Do you remember that save, Shea? Uh, I do, yeah, I do, yeah. It was, um, yeah, it was a big game, of course, and uh, you know, you mentioned someone like Zinedine Zidane, he's probably. And he's, and he's tying the best player in the world. He's, he was a phenomenal player, and uh, I remember he whipped it over the free, over the the, the, the ball over the free, the wall, and uh, you know 
thankfully I've, I've managed to get a couple of steps in and, and, and dive into the sort of right hand top corner and I managed to get a strong enough hand to get it away. So yeah, it was a it was a nice save and an and important one as well in a big game. I, I I do remember this, and I'm sure you do as well. But uh, I know you're lauded as one of the greatest ever goalkeepers uh, um, in in the Premier League. And indeed, if I'm not mistaken, you were named in the Premier League team of the season for 2001, 2002, and 2005 and 2006, which is remarkable, Shay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I mean when the, when your fellow professionals vote for you and stuff, and if you think of all the amazing goalkeepers that, that have played in the Premier League, especially in that area, you know, people like Schmeichel and all and, and the likes, Peter Cech and all these people and you know, I was I was picked by them, you know, to, to be the best goalkeeper in the league, which is which is fantastic. And 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 as I say, going back to Lifford, you know, you you never thought things like that could could happen to a Lifford man or, or someone from Donegal. You know, it's just it's just a bit surreal, I suppose. And uh, you know, not it's, it's a lot of hard work goes on behind the scenes that you know people maybe don't see as well, but. It's all worthwhile when you when you you know get picked in a team like that. You were just twelve years of age when another Donegal great, Packy Bonner, played at Euro '88. Yeah. Had he a huge influence in your life and career, Packy? Well, he did in a sense because he was our hero. You know, he's from Donegal and he was the Ireland goalkeeper. Um, so I suppose that was part of my dream as well. If you know, if Packy can do it, then you know why can I not do it? So. Um, yeah, I mean, when I went into the Irish setup, and and Packy was was still, you know, the first choice goalkeeper and stuff, and even at Glasgow Celtic when I went to, over there at sixteen, we trained together and stuff. So that was like, you know, a dream come true as well to be actually training with Packy Bonner and stuff, and and, and you know the, the the help that he gave me and the tips and advice and stuff, and not just only football advice, but you know, you know, off the pitch stuff. And yeah, yeah, it was it was it was it was a it was a good influence to have in my life and in my career, and 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 we still keep in touch now, Packy. You know, he's he's. He's been a great over over the years that I've been playing for Ireland and stuff. And I think I always remember one thing he said to me when I was a kid, like in, when I was broken, breaking into the Irish team. He says it's, you know, it's one thing getting there and getting your first cap or even a couple of caps. He says, but it's 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 the hard thing is staying there, you know. So mm. that sort of rung in my head as well that you know I want to show to people and even pack it to a sense that you know I'm not here for 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 one or two caps. I'm here for, you know, I want to be here for the long haul. And 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 and, and you know that was a big thing for me. Is it true? Because I know you're a very kind man, and I know you've done an awful lot of work, Shay, for for charity. But is it true that you give your international fees to charity? No, that's not the case. But I probably give more than my international fees to charity personally because, you know, I lost my mum to cancer when when I was only five years of age, and and um, I'm a patron for Macmillan Cancer over here in England, and I like to do more stuff actually with, with cancer charities back in Ireland as well. Albeit I'd done at the time at the minute, but when I retire, then I'd like to think that. I can sort of strike up some sort of a, you know, partnership or, or try and help them out in, in any way I can because, you know, something that affected you know my life and, and and lots of people's lives, you know, not just in Ireland but around the world. And I've done a lot of work over in England, of course, for for Macmillan and and, and different charity events and raised you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds over here and, and and donated my own money as well. So it's something obviously that we've lived up with our brothers and sisters and obviously my dad as well. It's it's we know what it's like to 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 lose someone so young as well and. Uh, you know, she gave me a lot of, my mum gave me a lot of, um, I don't know, encouragement, I suppose, from up above, I suppose, and, and a lot of strength to, to sort of get me where I, where I am in my career. Are, are you a spiritual man, Shay? I mean, do you believe in, you know, are you religious? Uh, I am and I'm not. I mean, I don't I don't go to Mass every week, but I, I would pray most days and stuff just quietly for a couple of minutes, not, nothing too serious. You know, I used, mm. to, used to go to Mass a lot more young, when I was younger, but... You know, football sort of takes over your life. We play a lot of games on Sundays and different things. But I think you know it, it does help having a having a belief in something. You know, because it's there's lots of things out there. As you know, Marty, lots of things that people can go off the off the tracks and off the rails and stuff. And um, yeah, I think religion can help you. You know, try and you know stay on stay on stay on the right path. Because it's August and their schools are out and there's young boys and girls uh, listening to us. Advice for young goalkeepers to follow in the footsteps of Shea Given. What would it be? Um, well, I think you got to work hard. I mean, whatever they choose in life, and if they want to choose to be a goalkeeper, then have the right mindset. You know, dedication is is, is huge, and, and listen to your coaches and teachers and, and and what have you. Because the thing about a goalkeeper position, it can be very lonely. You know, you can make a mistake, and you know the you want the the ground to open up and swallow you up. But that's that's part and parcel of goalkeeping. You know, you you get a claim for making the great saves, but you've got to take on the chin. You got to have broad shoulders if you do make a mistake. That that's part and parcel of of the position and. 
it doesn't make you a bad goalkeeper. It doesn't make you a bad person. It's 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 about how you respond to the mistakes and 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 you go out next game and you show your teachers, you show the coaches, you know that you are a, a good goalkeeper. And I think work work ethic and anything you do in life, you have to work hard because you get the rewards. You know, you look at the top players in the world like Messi and Ronaldo and people like that. They you know they're the best players. They are extremely talented, but the the work that they put into their profession is is phenomenal. Would you like to go into management, Shay? You know, I'd like to think the experience I've gained over the years that I could. I could get into management, but it's just a, if if I want to, you know, if with family life and, and, and different things, it, it's a big commitment because, you know, it's 24-7 and you're watching players and watching games and watching your own team and it's just, it's non-stop, you know, you can't switch off, but it's something I've done all my life, it's football since I was a kid, so it's, it's something I'd love to stay involved in, be that manager or, or a coach or assistant manager, then I'd like to think I could give something back to, to you know, players in the future. Would you ever come back and live in Donegal? I don't think I would, Marty. Not not in a bad way. I, yeah. I I like where I live in you know Manchester, and and I like I love going home. Like I love love the feeling driving home or flying home to Donegal and and seeing everyone for a few days. And 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 you know there's not because I've been away for so long. I've been away what twenty four, twenty five years is such a long time. Um, you know my life, my kids are in school and stuff over here and and and, and settled and stuff. You know, but I do love coming home. I lo- I do love you know. I love it. I mean, not just Donegal. I mean, I love Galway and Dublin. I love getting you know all around the country. I'd love to go around golfing one day, one day around Ireland and and, and having a proper holiday in Ireland because I've never had that ch- chance or mm. because I've been so busy. And I'd love to do that one day. Well, I'm I'm sure you will, uh, Shay Given, because uh, certainly I think everywhere you go, you'll be warmly welcomed and and loved. I, I really appreciate you doing the interview with us uh, you're oh, a legend in Irish football and before I go because Donegal are playing on Saturday and I know you love Donegal do yeah. you think Donegal will beat Dublin the All-Ireland Champions in Croke Park? <laughs> <laughs> of course Marty what else, you, what, how else can I answer that question? <laughs> we are coming down from the hills to beat Dublin that's all you need to know <laughs> Well, Shay Given, I know that you're probably bombarded looking with people looking for requests to do interviews. Uh, I really appreciate you did this with us this morning on the Ryan Tuberty Show. And continued success. We've admired and loved you for the last 20 years and we'll follow you no matter where you go. Oh, thanks, thanks. I appreciate you having me on.